Number three, the Stevies are major hypocrites. The headquarters church is called Faithful Word. Baptist church. You know, if you're a Baptist church, you're an autonomous group. You run your own affairs. You don't open your doors for people to come in there, jump on your platform, and dictate to you what you got to believe. But faithful word, their whole doctrinal system is based on allegorical interpretation and rejection of literal interpretation. And they call themselves faithful word? That's hypocrisy. What else is new? Number four, they're victims of the very book they have scorned. Let me tell you the truth. Again, if you never heard anything about Ruckman, some of the stuff you'll hear you think has come from another planet somewhere. But the, all you've got to do is be versed in the book and you'll realize how deep most all these things he's taught us over the years are, how deep they are and how true they are. You know what he said one time? <laughs> Listen to me. You ever heard him say this? That King James Bible there is the most de deceptive book that's ever been produced on the planet. The most deceptive. It's a two-edged sword. And what Dr. Ruckman meant by that is God set this book up where if you don't want to trust him and accept the truth, he'll give you plenty of verses in there that you can break your neck on and point to it. Here the Jews reject Jesus as the Son of God. So there's a verse over there, God calls Israel his son. They can run to that verse there. All the works crowd want, want to reject salvation by grace. They go to the old, they go to the gospel period there and get that verse where Jesus told the rich young ruler, what do I do to go to heaven? Keep the commandments, see? He, he's, put, he's made that book such that if you don't want him, he'll let you hang yourself with it. He'll, he'll help yourself. Say, isn't that dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. You ever read John 7, 17? Jesus said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Whether I speak in my as a man of God, God, your heart's right. You'll get to the right truth. These nut jobs are a victim of the very book they've scorned. Illustration, Brother Gip already pointed out. And I sure hope you jump into some of that stuff this week, preacher, the covenants and all these other things you're playing around with teaching. You come this week, you're going to learn a lot of stuff and get help. Listen to this. Abraham C. mentioned it already. Well, there's three, there's three, there, there's three, uh, there's three types of seed. God's just playing with those people's brains. He mentioned it already. There's Abraham's physical seed. There's Abraham's spiritual seed. And don't forget the Messiah. He's another seed. These guys, you think these people have a clue which verse is talking about what? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. I don't know if there's television in heaven, but if there is, the layout of sea and age is on the comedy channel. Talk to me. Number five, their movement reeks of satanic influence. I mean, it reeks. I know. I, don't get, I, it reeks of satanic influence. Enough said. The devil has always tried to paint Baptist in a bad light. The number one illustration from church history goes all the way back to 1534. Anybody in history wants to talk about Baptists, they always go to the Munster Rebellion. A bunch of radical Anabaptists took over the city of Munster, Germany, and killed a bunch of folks and were waiting for the Lord to come back. And they were radical and crazy and anything but what a Baptist congregation should be like. But that's the publicity. They established it, they established it back then, and the history books won't let it die. They no more represented us than Mickey Mouse did. But that's the way the system works. Most, most recently, it was the Westboro Baptist Church nut jobs. God hates your child. God hates fags, you know. Remember all that crowd? Bikers have to show up at cemeteries to block these Baptists away from the grieving families. Because it was always Westboro Baptist Church. Didn't you ever read about the Christians? First century in the Roman in Roman amphitheater, bring on the Christians, throw up the lions. That's what devil's trying to build up with the rank and file out there in the world that want our blood. And these are the clucks that are helping it to happen in the near future if the Lord doesn't come back. And now we have the faithful word, Baptist Church. And his satellite churches. That's what's crazy about his movement now. Westboro Baptist Church was one time. Anderson's got his jump-started denomination growing. Airheads just like he is. Listen here, I just passed by the other day, uh, this morning, I passed by uh, 
Jimmy John's out there in Swartz Creek. And I remembered sitting out there and, and talking to this McMurtry guy who pastors out in, in uh, Illinois somewhere. <laughs> Somebody gave me, you won't believe who gave me his name, Wendell Runyon. He gave me a list of preachers. He, Brother Bill, you got to call these preachers for your new book. And I wrote them all down. And I called him, and boy, I didn't know he was a Stephen Anderson guy. I was just told he would be a good prospect. And oh, my soul, he starts trying to convert me now to the Stephen Anderson thing. And I got to thinking, man, I want to get that Jimmy John's turkey sub. And I was stuck out there because he was going on and on. And finally, I said, man, nothing personal, but can't you read? Romans says, all Israel shall be saved. He said, I believe that. We're Israel. I said, give me a break. I got to get out of here. You know, he sent me a video the other day, McMurtry, or made a, made, a, made a video of me saying all those things and making fun of me. Yeah, he called me. Yeah. He, Bill Grady, he's pretty crazy or whatever he was saying. I don't know. It's on a stupid internet.